This presentation is to describe the use of the GDS SASW system. The first screen we see is the SASW test wizard where we can select whether it is a remote trigger which is uh, acquisition is triggered by a hammer hitting a strike plate or a local trigger which is a user defined button where when the user presses the button acquisition is triggered. At the moment the bulk unit weight is being estimated by double clicking on any of the input boxes a number pad appears for use with the GDS touch screen. Next the geophone sensor position needs to be selected and by double clicking on whether the sensor is present we can change from an N for no to a Y for yes to say that in this case the first three geophones are present. Then by double clicking on the distance we can select the geophone distance which is very important for the stiffness calculations. Here we can see there are three geophones selected and their distances have been entered. When we are ready to go on we press next and we go to the next test wizard screen. On this test wizard, wizard screen we can choose between automatic stacking where every single hammer blow we do gets automatically stacked or manual acceptance where we can check each hammer blow before we accept it into the stack. The stack type can be either time domain or frequency domain. Time domain is best for stacking where we have a known trigger point i.e. hammer against a strike plate. Frequency domain is important and can be used when we do not know the trigger time accurately. For example, if we were taking data from a piling rig. The next test wizard screen, we can select frequency selection, either manual selection or automatic selection, which will pick a certain frequency range above a particular coherence level. Manual selection is perhaps the more common, common usage where at the end of the test we select exactly which frequencies we want to include in the data. Acquisition options, we can choose different sampling frequencies um, and which frequencies we're going to sample up to. We could see 150, 300 or 500 hertz is are the frequencies we're going to sample up to and we can choose different sample frequencies per channel. The data we're going to save, we can save GVD, i.e. stiffness versus depth, and all the coherence values and all of the phase angles. This is the minimum saving level. The second level is stiffness, depth, coherence, phase angles, and each time domain trace of the stacked unit, or stiffness, depth, time domain, phase, coherence, and all of the frequency uh, data. After this we are now ready to go, so we press start. Here we can see the test screen and I'll just walk over and bang the hammer onto the strike plate and get the first set of data. You will now see that the stack count increases to 1 and I'll just do another blow and the stack count increases to 2. On the left the six graphs show um, the fast Fourier to Fourier transform of magnitude against frequency. If I click on one of these graphs, ah, no, first I'm going to show you that we can see individual geophone traces, one, two, and three, or all shows us all six geophone traces. On the left, we can see the six magnitude FFT blah blahs. I click final stack, ignore the magnitudes. Here on the left we can see the phase against frequency. If I click on any one of these graphs, the data section in the middle shows the exact data for that particular point that I've selected. Here we can see I've selected 10 hertz, spectral line number 10, here 142 hertz, and you can see the coherence, least square angle, max deviation for each frequency that is selected. In the bottom left hand corner the light blue graph shows the coherence value, as is general, you can see that the coherence level is very, very high for perhaps 90% of the values. Um, and it's important to use this coherence value as a measure of whether the data is, is suitable.
So I'm going to go down and choose some frequency down at maybe 10 hertz. By selecting left and right I can choose a desired frequency and then I press hold line. Now I'm going to select an upper frequency just let's choose 100 Hz to give it a nice nice value and then I'm going to set say accept values and it will take every value between 10 and 100 Hz and plot it on the shear modulus versus depth graph. If I double click on the shear modulus versus depth graph that will change to shear wave velocity against wavelength. Double click again and it changes back. The beneath the shear modulus depth graph are X and Y increase and decrease buttons where we can zoom in to particular parts of the graph. When we are ready, we can say new test and save data. The data will all be saved and we will be back at the beginning ready to perform a second test.